Podcast Live. And we are live. Good evening, Coventry. Um, uh, hello. I'd like to uh, welcome you to this live broadcast here tonight. We're broadcasting to you live from the next UK city of culture, obviously. And we have got some interesting information to share with you tonight. And uh, what we're, it's all about today is it is all about good evening Dave Clearbury you are the first person on so Dave Clearbury you can ring my bell and you can play with my dingling well I don't want you to play with my dingling Dave good evening Alistair Simpson second person on you can ring me bell good evening to you guys too and good evening to the next people if you guys want to share it in the bottom with anybody or into any groups that's great so third person on you can ring my bell. There you go. My dingling, my dingling. I want you to play with my dingling. Now, have some very interesting information for you today of something that happened on this day in history. Hello, Tricia Fallon. You get a dingling as well. You can ring my bell. There we go. So, we're all talking about March the 30th today. And March the 30th in history. I'm going to take these corona gloves off because I can't hold my iPad as well at the same time. March the 30th in history is the Feast of St. Osberg Day. And St. Osberg of Coventry, um, it's the Roman Catholic Feast of St. Osberg. It's not her official feast. Because I found out today, by speaking to Prue Peretta, who's played Lady Godiva for 38 years. Good evening, Robert Gibbs. You can have a ding -a as well. There you go. Uh, I found out today from Prue Peretta, it's called a triumvirate. Adam Reeve, good to Adam Reeve. You're always going to get, you are always going to get to play with my dingling son. <laughs> always, lad. Anyway, found out today in history, September the eighth, September the 9th, September the tenth. Three days. It's a triumvirate or something like that. First day is for the Holy Mary. Uh, second day is the feast day of Saint Osberg. And the third day is the Feast of Lady Godiva. And that's September the 8th, September the 9th, September the 12th. Bookie, <laughs> just for being a great DJ, son, you can ring my bell. That's what I'm talking about. Creamer, stay on for this, because this is all about St. Osberg. So, St. Osberg, Gaz Colville, ring my bell, ding-a-ling-a-ling, -a -ling, um, was an Anglo-Saxon woman, okay? And she was probably the first person to be sent to Coventry. All right, probably the first person. Now... It is suspected, okay, that her cult comes way before the Vikings. Way, way, way before the Vikings. She was sent here in about 650 AD, all right? And she came to Coventry, all right? And she came up the Burgess. Good evening, John Yeadon. Good to see you, sir. She came up the Burgess, chucked a left just before Primark. Obviously, Primark wasn't there then. Um, and settled on Priory Row, where she founded an abbey, okay? And the Holy Virgin Osberg there uh, started an abbey there. Now, it stayed an abbey till about 1016, when Mark Elvis Hampton, ring the bells, they're coming, Brother Paul. Mark Elvis Hampton, you can get a bell for your ding -ling. Guys, if you want to share it in the bottom corner, share it into any pages or groups. Facebook have stopped me sharing, so <laughs> just share it, that'd be great. So, St. Osberg forms the abbey there. And she starts all the singing, all the women singing, all the nuns and all the rest of it. Then what happens is King Canute comes through in 1016, stops off at Coombe Abbey, kills all the monks, bosh, 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 bosh. Makes his way over to Stonely Abbey, kills all the monks, bosh, 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 bosh. Ivor Anderson, one of my first ever bosses and probably one of my greatest ever bosses and... Not that good a snooker player. You can ring my bell this evening. So what happens? God bless you, Ivor. Yeah. Um, for taking me on in the first stage. <laughs> Worst decision you and Lawrence Reddy ever made. Um, anyway, what happens is King Canute, Peter Sturgeon, good to see you, sir. King Canute comes through, kills all the monks, makes his way over to Coventry, right? Comes to Coventry and St. Osberg's nuns, they come out and they're like... I am a holy nun. And Canute goes, not anymore, you're not, sweetheart. Bosh. And they fall on the ground and they die there on the ground. They literally die on the ground. The blood soaks into the ground. So it becomes holy ground. It becomes consecrated ground. It becomes sacred, sacred ground. Okay. King Canute didn't like Edric Striona. So what King Canute with Edric Striona did was he killed him. And then he's looking for somebody to collect his taxes. Good evening, Dawn Clark. Looking for somebody to collect his taxes. And what he does 
is he finds this bloke called Leo. And his name is Leo Frick. He is the Earl of Mercia. He's married to a bird called Godiva. Um, sorry, I shouldn't say that about our First Lady. Pardon me, your First Lady. And uh, he marries Lady Godiva. Now, Lady Godiva is a very, very holy woman. And she sort of says to Leo Frick at night, you know, she says to him, oh, Darling, I've been thinking about starting a new church in a place called Coventry. And I think we should build it on the site where the First Lady, St Osberg, started her church. So what happened was Lady Godiva and Leo Frick started to fund the church on the ground where St Osberg's church was, which is in modern day Priory Row, Coventry, which as we all know is behind the Flying Standard Pub and behind Nando's. Debbie Elvin, you can have a bell. Um, so what happens is they found the church there. Now, there is a plaque in Priory Row that says St Osberg came here 650, Lady Godiva and Leofric founded a church in 1043, but they didn't. They didn't found the church in 1043. What they did was they consecrated the church in 1043. I'm just going to have a sip of me tea. I don't know whether you can see that nice Coventry Soul 113 mug there, Faith, Hope and Love. Joanne, Naughty Joe and Sue Cresman. Yeah, there you go. You can ring my bell. Um, so what happens is that they actually consecrated the cathedral on the 4th of October 1043 and the plaque on the wall says that nearby are two porches where they lay. Mm. Um, what the history books also tell us is the head of St Osberg was covered in silver and gold and held in a glass case and held as a holy relic. Um, so we know that St Osberg was laid to rest in Leo Frick and Godiva's church. We know that she remained to rest in Leo Frick and Godiva's church. We know that she's never been discovered. So perhaps she's still there. Who knows? However, so according to, 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 according to, according to legend, according to myth, according to stories, um, she is still there, as are Leo Frick and Godiva. However, let's have a look at Coventry schools, OK, because this is where St Osburgh's gets really weird, right? St Osburgh's Church, always also known as the church. Wendy Seenan, you can have a, 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 you can have a, you can have a ring on me ding -a -ling. There you go. Uh, the St Osburgh's Church, also known as the Church of the Most High Sacrament and St Osburgh, beautifully stunning Roman Catholic Church, uh, Upper Hill Street and Barris Lane. Um, just uh, and it's stunning. Okay, and there's some pictures on the deep fat for our website uh, and pictures on Paul Curtis' website about the church itself. Okay, um, built between 1843 and 1845, designed by Charles Hanson, and it was founded by Benedict. Hello, Wendy. Uh, founded by. Please re interact on this, guys. Type stuff up because if you type, I'll interact with you. Um, founded between, built between 1843 and 1845, designed by Charles Hanson, okay? Founded by the Benedictine monks from Downside Abbey. Do not confuse Downside Abbey with Downton Abbey, okay? Downside Abbey is the home of all benedictine in the UK. It's the head of the Benedictine order in the UK, OK, and Mark Creamer, um, you know a lot about the Benedictine. Good evening, Rachel Goodyear. Lovely to see you. I hope Mr Goodyear is well as well. And I hope you're both having a good year, the good years. Um, anyway, what happens is it's built. OK, Downside Abbey. Iceman. Happy birthday, son. Happy birthday. Alan Grantham. Hello, son. Uh, Anthony Slevin. Hello, son. You can have a dingling too. Anyway, what happens is Downside Abbey... Send a monk, and what is his name? None other than William Ullathorne. William Ullathorne, which is everybody who is Irish and from Coventry knows. Thank you, Steve Iceman. Everybody knows that uh, William Ullathorne is where Bishop Ullathorne School comes from in Coventry. And if you didn't know that, don't worry. Every day's a school day. Jesus, I just can't get to work with some people, you know, in the background. Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, what happens is 
Uh, he got sent to Coventry. It was a small chapel. It was dedicated to St. Lawrence and St. Mary. He had big dreams, big visions, big plans for this big church, okay? And he started building it. 9th of September, 1845, the church was consecrated by the Virpka Apostolic. And who is he called? He is only called Nicholas Wiseman. Which is where Cardinal Wiseman School comes from. So you've got, so far we've told you where Bishop Ullathorne School comes from. Now we've told you where Cardinal Wiseman School comes from. Keelan Jones, I don't know what Roman Catholic school you went to in Coventry. Maybe you can type it in down the bottom. Uh, but I know which one your mother went to. Um, she was in my class. And this is where we're moving on. Get your mother on, Keelan Jones. Get your mother on, because this is where we're moving on. 21st of June, 1846, Bill Ullathorne, or William Ullathorne, to his pals, became the Vicar Apostle. And they started the church and they opened the church, St. Osberg's Church, and who was there? None other than John Henry Newman, okay? Which is where your Cardinal Newman School comes from in Coventry, okay? And he's a particular favourite of my dad, to be honest with you, John Paul Henry Newman. He, my dad loves John Henry Newman. He thinks he's a saint. He actually is a saint now. He is a saint. Anyway, 14th of November, 1940, Luftwaffe decide that they're going to do a bit of citywide redesign. Uh, and during one particular air raid, the church loses its roof. Boom. The chancel, the east side masonry, and all the windows and the furnishings were destroyed. Now, the chancel was destroyed until 1950, when all of the stained glass windows were replaced and bought from. Thanks, Dave. Thank you very much, mate. I'm trying and trying and trying to teach people about the history of Coventry because I think if we if we teach people about the history of Coventry and we're all a bit more knowledgeable about it, we'll all feel a bit more proud of it. Anyway, what happened? This is a great story, and this is the final sort of story. So just hang on in there, guys that are listening. The stained glass windows had all been blown out. The priest turned around and said, "We need to try and replace the windows." He spoke to the parishioners. Okay. They spoke to Early and Company, and Early and Company are a renowned Irish stained glass medieval stained glass company. Okay, renowned. And the parishioners started paying for the windows. The parishioners started giving money for the stained glass windows in St. Osberg's Church, and one of the windows is done in uh, honour of Winifred Coppola. And you might say to me, Winifred Coppola, Winifred Coppola. Well, I heard this story from a doorman who stands outside Draper's, whose name is Tony Coppola, and he went to Cardinal Newman School, and his brother Leon Coppola, and Tony Coppola told me this story. I went down the church, I found the window, and he told me that his grandma had actually paid for the window. And we all know, Tony Coppola is a bodybuilding legend in Coventry. Um, he's got five husky dogs, and he stood on the door for years, best dressed doorman in the, in the city. Uh, and, and he's an absolute legend, a diamond, diamond guy. Tony Coppola taught, told me this. And of course, his dad was a world championship bodybuilder like that. Yeah. And uh, obviously their uncle is Francis Ford Coppola over in America, who makes the films. I've just added that bit in. <laughs> it could be. Who knows? I'm not, I'm not a fact fryer today, so who knows? Anyway, Benedictine monks from Downside Abbey, not Downton Abbey, served the parish until 1992, 28 years ago, handed it back to the Archbishop of Birmingham, and uh, two, uh, three new priests came in, Father Sunday, Father Pontius, Father Jimmy. They're now running it. They also run St Elizabeth's Church in Coventry uh, and St Benedict's Church in Coventry. So, there you go. There's a the factor today. Osberger's Feast Day, uh, but the real feast is on the 9th of September. So we've got the Holy Mary, September the 8th, St. Osberg Feast, September the 9th, Lady Godiva Feast, September the 10th, the Triumphant, um, as our, our, my good friend Prue Peretta told me today. Um, so if you went to Cardinal Newman School, Rachel Jones, you've just, uh, you've just missed the explanation of Cardinal Newman School, Cardinal Wiseman School and Bishop Arthur School, but you can still get a ding-a-ling 
from me bell. There you go. Uh, you can watch it afterwards, Rachel, and catch it up. Uh, if you went to any of those schools, Cardinal Newman, Cardinal Wiseman, Bishop Bullethorne, share this out with your schoolmates. Share it on your timeline and tag your schoolmates in. Um, thank you very much, Peter Sturgeon. Thank you very much, James Sanders. Um, my name's Paul Curtis. I am the um, Deep Fat Friar. I am, uh, <laughs> I, I am uh, Paul Curtis Tours. I'm, a, I'm an unofficial town crier. I'm not a real town crier. I'm not, I, I have asked if I can be the real town crier, and hopefully they might allow me to be the real town crier come the year of culture, because we haven't got one, and we can have a competition, and I'm quite loud, etc. Bishop Ullathorne, 89 to 94. That's a great idea, Sean Connolly. If you went to Cardinal Newman, if you went to Cardinal Wiseman, if you went to Bishop Ullathorne, put the five years that you were there on, uh, on the post and just share it with your classmates. Um, there's a guy called Steve Bradley. He's done an amazing video of St. Osberg's Church um and you know just just let's start a campaign peter sturgeon indeed indeed one last thing coventry creatives if you are a creative in coventry if you create anything whether you create art whether you create content whether you create cakes mm, whether you create poetry whether you create songs whether you create dance anything that you create whether you create jewelry whether you create paintings anything like that at all if you create can you Go on Facebook and go over to Sitting Rooms of Culture and just follow and like it because we, as Coventry creatives during this time, we're all trying to help each other and support each other and, and come up with some good ideas on how to support Coventry. So that's it from me. That's today's Daily Fact um, on this day in history. Uh, over on the Deep Fat Fryer page on Facebook, there is there is plenty of information. Give us a share, give us a follow, give us a like. All this week, uh, we've got the town crier uh, in with us. The Deep Fat Fryer's gone away on holiday. Um, I'm lying. Uh, <laughs> we're going to take a commercial break. That's it, Dave. We're coming up. And, and ju Oh, just about commercial breaks. No, Jason, not Shitley Abbey. Um, commercial breaks. Look at this. Would you look at this mug? Coventry Soul 113 Faith, Hope and Love. There is opportunities for product placement within our actual evening shows. So if you have a product and you want to give it a pump, uh, give us a shout. If you want one of these mugs, if you want a Coventry Soul 113 Faith, Hope and Love mug, um, just get in touch with us. Send us a message afterwards. We do T-shirts as well. And uh, we're also going to start to show art from people in Coventry behind us. Uh, so you can see the art, Coventry Art. Did an amazing deal yesterday with one of the best street spray artists in the city. Um, I'll not hide his name. His name is Mick Batchelor. He's called Dynamic Art. The guy's a wizard, man. You give him a wall, he will create some art for you on a wall. Uh, he's done the Lady Godiving Cafe more so. So that's it. We're out of it. Commercial break's on its way. Um, I'll give you one more little ding -a -ling. Yeah, And we finish off, as usual, my ding -a -ling. My dingling. I want you to play with my dingling. And as we all know, it was recorded here in Coventry in the library by Chuck Berry in 1970 in Coventry Library, the capital of culture. It is. It's just great. It's, we're such a cultured bunch. We're such a cultured bunch. See us all soon. Good day. God bless uh, the Queen. God bless St. Osberg. And God bless Coventry and God bless Mark Robbins. God bless you, Mark Robbins. See you soon. Bye.